Social media is an active acts that tears down the fabric of a relationship over time if not managed correctly. What happens? See, a long time ago, in order to become famous, you had to do something profound affecting humanity, right? Today, if you want to be famous, you don't need to do that. All you need is an internet connection and maybe a selfie stick and a camera and you can be famous. And guess what? The more clothes you take off, the more the likes. The more radical and crazy things we may do, the more the response rate we get. And then the greater the response rate we get, the more the dopamine, the more sense of gratification. And the more the sense of gratification, the greater the urge you will have to do more. What happens over time is that you and I will lose the ability to accept attention from one person because our brains have become rewired to only accepting and craving attention from many people. Why 30 likes when I used to have 300 likes? Why 3,000 likes when I used to have 300 likes? And then your poor wife or your poor husband wants to sit down and have a conversation with you. You can't do it anymore. You're fidgeting. You're yearning to get back on the phone and to see who said what and who liked what. Social media, brothers and sisters, if you are not doing anything profound with it, like for example, saving people from the hellfire, guiding them to Jannah, and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which I would claim a lot of us are not doing, delete it altogether. If it is affecting your relationship, delete it altogether and save this mithaq ghalid, this firm covenant. Brothers and sisters, in terms of reviving the concept of mawadda, we can stop showing the world the happiness in our married life. Brothers and sisters, stop showing the world about the happiness that you are experiencing as a husband or wife. The world doesn't need to see the photos of your marriage. And if your husband, your sister has bought you a huge bouquet of flowers, you don't need to show the world on Instagram that your hubby has just got you some flowers. Because you're telling me from those 500 people you have as your friends, or maybe the 5,000 still, none of them are unmarried, none of them envy you for where you are at, you are saying to me that none of them are married but are not suffering as married men or women? And then they see now this carefully filtered photo that you have uploaded and they're thinking, what about me? Don't you fear that an eye may affect you because the evil eye is real? Now we don't want to take this to paranoia, brothers and sisters. But I don't doubt that many of the sudden breakdowns of relationships that seem completely unexplainable are due to the ayn. Ahmad narrates in his Muslim and Al-Hakim in his Mustadrak. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا رَأَى أَحَدُكُمْ شَيْئًا أَعْجَبَهُ فَلْيُبَرِّكْ فَإِنَّ الْعَيْنَ حَقٌّ If any of you sees something that he admires, let him make dua for barakah, blessing, Allahumma barik lahu, or something like that. He said, because the eye is real. The eye is real. And Abu Nu'ayn narrates in his Halya with a Hassan's chain of narration as mentioned by Nasruddin al-Albani that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّ الْعَيْنَ لَتُدْخِلُ الرَّجُلَ الْقَبْرَ وَالْجَمَلَ الْقِدْرَ The evil eye can take a camel to the pot and can take a man to his grave. La ilaha illallah. The evil eye can kill camels. It can put them in the pot for meat for people to eat. And it can take a man to his grave rather a step further. The Messenger وسلم, said in a terrifying hadith, The most thing that claims the lives of people from my nation after the Qadr of Allah is the evil eye. Marriage is supposed to be something private between you and your spouse. Why is it that when you have a wonderful moment with her, the very first thought that goes into my mind or yours is cyberspace? What's the best filter for this image? How am I going to get those envious eyes to look at me? And then you expect that this is something that will not require a, a price? Impossible, dear brothers and sisters. We have taken enemies at times, or at least the masses of people with different intentions. We have brought them into our homes. We have taken them for drives in our cars. We have shown them our dates with our spouses. We might as well pack them a suitcase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to cover this dear brothers and sisters and only show it perhaps to those few people who you know want good for you. And at times, it doesn't need to be somebody who hates you to affect you with the eye. It could be purely admiration, but they don't say the right things and then you are stuck. Don't put yourself, dear brothers and sisters, in this corner. Put yourself outside of harm's way. And that means cover the khair that Allah Almighty has given you. Rethink your social media now as we are speaking to, to, to one another. And say the adhkar, the morning and evening remembrances. And undoubtedly, this is sufficient protection. Allah is certainly sufficient for his son.